sounds like this, or maybe it's just completely broken, or it just looks bogus, this is the video for you because I'm gonna show you how to restore it. We're gonna make an old fan look and work like brand new, and the good part is you don't need access to your attic, and you won't need to call an electrician. It's an easy job and you can get it done in just a few minutes. Most people have no idea that these fans are completely repairable. That means you can get parts, you can service them, and all of it is very easy to do. The one here was made by Newtone about 20 years ago, but they were made by Brone and a number of other brands, and they generally look the same. Now you want to start by removing the lens cover that goes over your bulb, and then take the bulb out. But you may never have looked at what was underneath, and that entire housing is generally held on by a single wing nut. So all you need to do is unscrew that. But again, that's holding it up, so you want to press on the housing itself with your hands to hold the weight. Now none of this weighs a lot. In fact, once you get it out, you just take the part that holds the bulb and put it through the grill. Some fans are just a fan, others are a fan and a light, but they're almost always hooked up like this. The fan and the light each plug into a socket. They're almost never hardwired in, and all you have to do is unplug the plug for the light, and the other one is connected to the fan, and now you can go ahead and clean up the inside of the housing. Now in my case, I knew that the fan was dead because the motor was just humming and it wouldn't spin. And getting a brand new motor, which is like getting a new fan, only cost about 25 bucks and it's simple to replace. And removing the motor is really easy. It's held on by just that single Phillips head screw below the outlets. Now you want to hold on to the housing so that it doesn't drop on you. And now just pull on the side of the screw and the motor housing should come right out. And now spend a few minutes to vacuum out the inside of the housing so that everything's nice and clean for your new install. With the motor out, now we can replace it. And the best part is you can do all this work on your floor, which makes the job a lot simpler. And when you order your new motor, if you've already got it, then you'll have it in hand. But if not, use that label to get the right one for your fan. Start by removing the old motor from the housing. And that's easy to do. You just take these two nuts off and you can use a set of pliers or a socket set if you've got one. Now put the new motor into the house in exactly the same way as the original. If it feels like it's not fitting correctly, it's probably not, and go ahead and reverse it until it feels like everything lines up. If you're nervous, take a picture before you remove the old motor so that you can have it for a reference. Also notice that electric cord goes through the housing because that's going to plug back into the socket once you reinstall it. So put those nuts back in place and tighten them up securely. Now we just need to install the fan assembly onto the motor itself. Unfortunately, you don't need any tools for that. It actually just presses on. Once you get it started onto the shaft, I find it's easiest to put it on the floor and then push it from the back of the motor down until the shaft goes all the way onto it. You want to make sure that you refer to the directions that come with your kit in case they tell you to place it differently. Now we can just reinstall it into the housing. With it all cleaned up, it goes in a lot easier, but you don't just press it straight on. It's got those tabs on one side, you line them up, and now you can press the opposite end in, and you can see the screw hole lines back up. Tighten up the Phillips head screw, and now everything's mounted, and you've just got to plug the cord back into the socket. And don't worry if you forgot which outlet they plug into, but it does make a difference. The motor will almost always go into the black or the brown plug, and the light will go into the white plug. At this point, it's okay to turn the power back on without the light, just to make sure your fan is working properly. Now that everything's working good, we've got to take care of the grill itself because this thing is looking nasty. You can order brand new grills and lens assemblies if you want, but there's really no reason. Just clean the one you've got and start off by using a degreaser. You can use Simple Green or anything you've got on hand. Spray it thoroughly, give it a little time to work, and you're going to see the years of buildup just melt off. Now bust out your garden hose and spray everything off completely. You don't want any of that soap residue left behind. The grill is looking really clean, but unfortunately it's still yellow, so for our next step we need to let this thing dry thoroughly. And here's the secret that's going to make our grill look brand new, and in our case bright white. But you could paint it any color you want, but make sure the spray paint you're going to use says it's safe for plastic. Now grab a scrap piece of cardboard, but you want to get some sort of a box so that you can prop the grill up. If you were to put it just on the box, the paint will kind of glue the edges of the grill to the cardboard. Now just break out your spray paint and start to spray a light, even coat. And be sure to spray from different angles so that you get all edges of the plastic. And now in just about a minute, for less than 50 cents, you've got a brand new looking grill that is bright white. To reinstall the grill is easy. You just start by plugging in the light assembly and then you put it through the grill. The edges of that light actually hold the grill in place and then you reinstall that wing nut and it tightens everything up. We're ready to give this thing another update and I'm going to put in a brand new LED bulb and I got rid of that compact fluorescent. 
And before you reinstall your lens cover, you'll want to wash it up with some soap and water. If this thing is really yellowed or either of those tabs are broken off, you can buy just this part as a replacement for about 10 bucks. And our finished result is looking awesome. The fan is bright white, clean, and with a new motor, it's working perfectly. The total spend in this project was under $30, and the results were well worth it. If you called a pro to put in a brand new fan, you're going to spend over $400, and that might not even include the fan itself. Save yourself the money and the hassle, and consider doing the job yourself. And I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, and subscribe to my channel if you're not already for more videos coming up.